everyone, I'm Richard. Thanks for stopping to my kitchen. Today is the first day of the Texas State Fair in Dallas, Texas. And I tell you, if you've never been there, it's great. But one of the things that makes it great are the Fletcher's Corny Dogs. If you've never had a Fletcher's Corny Dog, you're missing something. I'm telling you, they are fantastic. I have spent a lot of time researching this, talking to a lot of people, looking on the net, trying to come up with their recipe, and I'm telling you, they guard it pretty closely. Even the packaging for the batter mix comes in in a package that doesn't identify the ingredients, so the stand workers won't even know. But I'm telling you, I think I've come close. Several months ago, I did a video on uh, corny links. I made them with Earl Campbell hot links, and the batter is almost there. I'm not going to come... I'm not going to come exactly to what they got, but for 349 days of the year that you can't go to the fair, this will come close. So let's get started. This video may run a little longer than, than my normal videos, but I think it's important to show you each step of this so that you can make these at home. Alright guys, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut a half a pound of bacon up into small pieces. The reason I cut it in small pieces is because it aids it in rendering the fat better because it gets closer contact with the bottom of the skillet. I've added this to a, a, a cold skillet. We're going to let this go on a little more than low heat because it'll render the fat a little bit better that way. The type of bacon I'm using is a product that I know Fletcher's uses is John Morrell. They also use the John Morrell combination beef and pork hot dogs. So what we're looking for as far as this recipe is two tablespoons of bacon fat. If your bacon's done, take a slotted spatula or a spoon and put your bacon in a bowl with some paper towels and save this because you can mix this with some like scrambled eggs for breakfast the next morning and what we'll do is we'll take our bacon fat we'll pour it into a bowl and we'll get started on our batter then we'll start on our corny dog batter I want to add one cup of all-purpose white flour one cup of cornmeal Make sure you don't get stone ground cornmeal unless you like really gritty corny dogs. One quarter cup of sugar. Four teaspoons of baking powder. A quarter teaspoon of salt. And a pinch of cayenne pepper. And give this a mix to combine. Then we'll incorporate our wet ingredients. We've got two lightly beaten eggs. At this time, we'll put in our two tablespoons of bacon fat. Now, give this just a, a general mix to get it down in there in your cornmeal and your flour mixture. And then we've got one cup of water. But we want to add this slowly. It's important to come up with the consistency that is perfect for corn dogs because if you make it too runny, it'll just fall off your dog. If you make it too thick, you won't be able to get your dog down there. So you just add water as you go. You're looking for a consistency of a little bit thicker than pancake batter. Now I've used about three quarters of a cup. This is what you're looking for. Just like that. So what we'll do is we'll transfer this to a tall cup so that we can dip our corny dogs down into. Also another tip, don't beat your batter to death. You're not making a cake here. You want it to have some consistency. So that's what you're looking for. Take your whisk and it just falls off of there. Once we get our dogs uh, with a little flour on them, it'll stick to it just fine. All right, we've got our batter poured up into a tall cup. This is what you want to use to dip your dogs in. 
So let's set that aside and let me talk about the dogs for a second. Now Fletcher's does in fact use John Morrell combination beef and pork hot dogs. So that's what we're going to be using. You're going to need... I dropped my knife and it's stuck in the floor. Alright, you're going to need four popsicle sticks or skewers. These are corny dog sticks that I got specially. And what you want to do, you just want to take a stick and stick them up in there about three quarters of the way through. So you'll have something to hold on to while you're eating your dog. So this is what you're looking for like that. Okay, let's start on our oil. Another thing that Fletcher's uses is peanut oil. So that's what I'm going to be using. It's a little bit more expensive, but it has a, a higher smoke point, and that's what you want. I'm going to add about three inches to my Dutch oven, and I want to heat this to 365. Now, a word about the heat. You have to make sure that it's at least 365, no more than 370. If you have it less than 365, it, your corn dogs will fall apart. If you have it more, your batter will burn. So let's get this up to about 365 and we'll start frying these puppies up. Waiting on your oil to come up to 365 or just a little above. Go ahead and take a paper towel and dry off your dog pretty well. Dredge it in some flour, not heavily. All you're looking to do here is dust this so that your batter will stick to your dog. Alright guys, our oil's at 365. Just go ahead and dip your dog down in your batter. Get it all covered. And drip it out like this. Let the excess fall off. Make sure it's all covered. Then, after the excess falls off, Give it a flip and just set it down in the oil. Don't drop it. Just let it settle just a little bit and drop it down in there. Every couple minutes, just go ahead and give them a flip. And you're looking for a golden brown color. It'll take about six or seven minutes, guys. Right, guys, check it out. Our corny dogs are done. Let's put a little mustard on there and give this a taste test. How about that? Mmm. I think the bacon drippings may be the key, but I'm not sure. Real moist and crunchy. Man, I'll tell you. Give this a try. Doesn't take too long to do. And it's real good. And if you go to the fair, make sure you stop by Fletcher's. Those things are phenomenal. But until next time, be nice to everybody. And I'll see you all later.